The Sony AX7 is trying to give us a Bluetooth speaker experience with spatial audio on the go. This actually looks very much like a standard Bluetooth speaker. The exception, of course, is the two satellite speakers that we have at the top that we're able to remove and put them behind us to give us that 360 personal audio experience that also works when you're having actually two people. You can actually have a small little bubble for you and your significant other, and you're able to share really good audio on the go. And that's one of the main unique features of this device. You can subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so you're always notified to whenever we have new videos videos on the channel. As far as the actual packaging and everything that we get in here, it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, the box is made out of recycled materials, similar to what we've seen from Sony in the past. Uh, and we just basically get on the box, it says 360 spatial sound ma uh, mapping with up to 30 hours of playback with Bluetooth 5.2. That's gonna be the primary interface in here. There is no other connection, no daisy chaining or anything. This actually comes as an all encompassing theater sounding system that you're able to basically enjoy by yourself or with somebody near you to, as a small personal experience. That's that's the main point here. It's intended to be personal and movable so you can enjoy it wherever you are. And here we have it, pretty much straightforward. The fabric is very nice and very soft. There's two main speakers or the speakers are in the actual base. And of course, we also have the two removable pieces. So you'll notice that on the bottom, the coils are actually, the charging coils are pretty much more of like a circular experience. There is a power button for each speaker as well as the rear and right indicator so you know exactly where to put them. Once you put them on, it's pretty much straightforward. There's a magnet in there. You feel where it needs to be and of course, we have the speaker there I'll put that back in there uh, but the experience is pretty much straightforward as long as they're on the dock they're charging and when they're disconnected they're not there is no other way of charging these other than putting them back on the dock so you just need to be aware that once the battery runs low you do need to put them back in there uh, charging time for both of them is about four and a half hours or so four hours for the base but about four and a half hours when you have this on so you just want to keep that in mind when you're charging now on the back we have two ports we have the DC in that's going to be using that charger that's included the 45 watt charger that's included in the box with the USB to C to cable and of course we also have a USB type A port, which I've been enjoying because I've been actually charging my devices out of it. Now this provides five volts at 500 uh, milliamp, as you can see here. So it'll provide you power, but it doesn't run any information back in there. As far as the actual unit itself, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and remove the actual charging or the, the two pieces right here. You'll notice it says basically that it's a five volt at 0.5 amps. That's the charging rate at between those four pins that we have. And that's the beauty of it here because it's circular. It'll always land on it. There's never going to be a chance where we don't have it in there. Once you have that on, you have a power button that you're able to push on, turn on and turn off. There are selections or certain settings in the actual application that allows us to put it in standby mode, which is what you're looking at it here. It doesn't actually shut off. It's in standby mode because if I actually put the speakers back on, let's say I put these guys back in there, it sits in there. But if I ever remove one, automatically turns on. So there are some functional or kind of automatic things that get turned on. Let's go ahead and turn it off here. And we have a Bluetooth indicator for connection, play, pause and answer and hang up phone calls, volume that controls your volume on your phone and sound field. And that's gonna be the where it starts creating that spatial sound. Keep in mind, you do need to play music that is uh, basically recorded in 360 or spatial audio for you to be able to benefit that. What I like about this is the fact that we're able to control it using the Sony Theater System app. So you're able to download that directly from the Google Play Store. I'm running it on my Xperia, but you can download it and install it on your Moto. I was running it on my Moto Edge Plus uh, 2023. It works absolutely fantastic. But you're able to actually configure it. As I said, it's sitting in standby mode. I'm actually able to turn it on using the app. So it turns on using the functionalities from the app. We're able to configure different experiences. I'll just lower this as well, actually me testing it. Uh, but you're able to set up the configuration and go in there, turns on. Those little chimes that we heard, it's connecting to the speakers themselves. So I can remove the speaker now. The speaker's actually active and ready to go. And I can also put it back on when I don't need it. Uh, there's the volume controller. This is just a primary volume controller and mute and play. So you can definitely see that there. There is a night mode and voice uh, or vocal mode or voice mode. And it's intended primarily to when you're using it like a regular Bluetooth speaker, meaning all the pieces are together and you're not really doing much. It's going to play music from the top pieces and the sides and it's going to be kind of an all a single direction type of an experience. When it gets more functional, obviously, is when we remove the satellite. So let's go ahead and move the satellites on the side. I'll put it down. You'll notice that the sound field automatically turned on. It is the same button that it's done here. If I press and hold it there, it removes it. Press and hold it again, it comes back. So everything is controllable via the on device buttons or directly within the app. It's very nice and very simple. It of course shows us the name of the other system that it's connected to. You're also able to see the front and uh, basically front left and right uh, speaker battery. So the 100% it's because these guys have been charging and the 80% has been charging straight to the main unit itself. Uh, it is rated to go up to 30 hours. I have not been able to get it to go down to 100, uh, down to 0% from 100. And I think that's the main benefit here. You're able to go for such a long time. You're not going to have any problems watching multiple movies, coming back to it different days and still enjoying it. So that's one of the big things. 
Um, other than that, you can shut it off, putting it up by basically standby mode, changing the bass level as well as the rear speaker level. So those are the ability of increasing the volume on these. Uh, they're not individually tuned. They're basically either you use both or you use, uh, well, basically you're configuring both at the same time. You're not able to configure one over the other. Uh, Bluetooth setting is basically pretty much telling us is do you want to have a priority for connection or do you have a priority for sound quality? And this is to our device, not to the speakers themselves. This is a where it gets a very unique experience. The speakers are actually connected directly into the main system and we're only connecting via Bluetooth to one unit. We're not doing multi-pair multi, multi -pair and sending the audio to all three. We're allowing the main unit to do all of the processing for us. Under system settings, we have obviously auto standby, which is by default set up on. Bluetooth standby, same thing to be able to turn on. And we have the ability of turning off some of the uh, audio cues that are in there. Uh, dimmers, you're able to turn on. Basically, you can go either bright, dark, or off. Uh, system information, pretty much straightforward. Uh, main unit 4500 and uh, basically just USB on that. Uh, just general information for you over there. Uh, under software update, if there is an update for this, it will come through. You're able to go through it and check it there. And of course, there's a tutorial on how to use it. And of course, help if you have any questions on there. And believe it or not, that's pretty much it. Uh, the only other thing that you need to worry about at this point is where do I put my speakers? Where do I actually position these speakers? As far as the speaker itself, it's actually pretty decent. It's not that heavy, almost about six pounds entirely with the two satellite pieces. Uh, positioning is going to be pretty much straightforward. And for the most part, I would say the most natural way of doing it. And that's because the main station itself. So the base station, when you remove the satellite pieces, it's going to be a little bit even lighter than that. You position this either in front of you. So if you're sitting on a chair, put it at the coffee table in front of you. If you're sitting and laying down, or let's say you're extending your feet, put it at the base of your feet. So not that far from where your feet are, but essentially enough for it to be able to project the audio to you. The satellites are going to be also nicely positioned to the right and left of you, but at a lower position than your shoulders, where you essentially you think, well, I need to have it higher up, put it somewhere up. No, put it lower, put it somewhere maybe a little bit behind you, but to the right and left of you. Keep in mind the speakers here on the satellites are pushing audio up. So you need to be lower than you to send the audio to hit the ears and give you that experience of 360 spatial audio. Once you have that done, you're able to turn on the functionality of turning on basically the spatial audio function. And you're again able to do it either directly within the app or directly on the actual unit. If it's too far, obviously the app is going to be your friend right there. And then from there, start figuring out where you're going to be listening to audio. In general, if you're listening to standard audio that is not uh, configured to be in spatial or 360 audio, you're not going to see a big difference there except for that it's going to give you audio from the front and from the back. Where it really shows the benefit is when you're playing music that's intended to be played in 360. Now, I'm using Amazon Music. 360 audio is obviously is supported in there. There's spatial audio on different players. So depending on the content that you're listening to, you're going to get a different experience. If you're watching movies, this is going to sound really good. Uh, the Bluetooth 5.2 is pretty decent decent for movies for watching content and you're not going to have a lot of delay. I probably will say that this is not intended for gaming so latency is going to be a big factor here if you're trying to be more on that reactive side of audio. Meaning you need to hear the actual cue to figure out what to do. There's going to be a little bit of a delay when you're playing games. Watching uh, movies and listening to music is going to be the major uh, appeal here. Uh, let me show you guys real quick a sound sample of how do these actually sound. I'm going to play obviously our favorite song Alex Crindo Jumbo by NCS Release. Here we have it. Configuration 1. Satellite speaker on and you notice spatial disk get turned off automatically. We don't get spatial audio when we have it in this configuration. Let's go ahead and start. Jack it up. This is the second configuration. Now, obviously I have them too close to each other, but essentially taking the satellite speakers, moving them away, but keeping the spatial functionality turned off. When you have that off, now the sound is actually more balanced across all three, not necessarily a 360 experience, but still room filling the sound. Let's go ahead and play that out. Jack it up. Still very good. It almost sounds almost the same as we had it before. Again, the intention is to separate the satellites to be a little bit further away. The last experience we're going to talk about, obviously, is the ability of turning on spatial audio at this point. Now, this track, unfortunately, is not going to do it justice because this is not a 360 sound. But I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick. The experience is still going to be more uh, fulfilled if you're using the correct media, something that's actually encoded in 360 or spatial audio. And again, a player that supports it, such as Amazon Music and so on. And this this is going to be the, essentially the best way to experience it. But overall, let's go ahead and play a quick sample. Mm -hmm. 
I have it in the kitchen area because I want it to be a little bit more of a bigger room. So this system is pretty much geared to somebody specifically looking for spatial audio out of a Bluetooth speaker that is portable, because that's the biggest thing about this. If you're using it in standard configuration, just this way, keeping the actual two satellites on top, it functions like a regular stereo speaker, Sony's configuration, the app runs the same way. You're able to broadcast your music to it. It's gonna work really good. Uh, taking the spatial functionality out of this is actually uh, just looking at it from that speaker point it's still a really good speaker from sony this is not going to disappoint um, aac and spc is going to be the primary codex that we have in here there's no ldac but one of the things i love about that is the fact that it's simple it's easy it's ready to go always anytime you want to go you can either again activate it by pushing the power button on the actual unit itself activating it directly from the app when you want to start playing music to it or even by just removing the satellites you're set bring in the satellite and the 360 spatial functionality, this is where it becomes very unique. Because it's such an intuitive system, single speaker works perfectly fine. I want spatial audio, pick up the two satellites, put them down, guess what? I got spatial audio right out of the box and it's ready to go. I'm enjoying it. Long battery life, really easy, very nice to do everything that I want. So we get those little beeps there. Once I'm done with this, I can just put them back on and I'm ready to go. I don't have to miss a beat. It's small, it's portable, about six pounds in total weight, and it's easily travel uh, ready for you. You can put this in your suitcase, you can take it with you, uh, you can take it with you if you're going camping, you just wanna sit down and enjoy some music in the tent. It's gonna work really, really good. Again, it's all about the positioning of where the base is gonna sit and the two satellites are sitting to give you that ability of putting that bubble around you. I think it's a great system, it's portable, it has a lot of nice little features in there, and if you're somebody that's been tired of listening to spatial audio with in-ear buds or over-the-ear cans, uh, and you want to have something portable like that, I think the AX7 does the job. This is not going to replace your theater system, but this is more of a way for you to enjoy content on the go in a more personal experience with the AX7. So with that being said, thank you very much to Sony for allowing me to check out and basically get some experience with the AX7 and I'm really enjoying it very much. It's definitely one of my most favorable uh, options right now, especially for wanting to listen to audio. For me, I just put the base station right in front of my keyboard when I'm working here on my desk, the two satellites on my recording studio desk, and I'm pretty much in basically encased in 360 audio to whatever I'd like. And even if you're listening to standard music in there, you're still gonna get some audio from the background. It's just, it's not gonna be as uh, profoundly impacting as when you're listening to audio that was recorded in that manner, where it does wanna be able to jump from one channel to the other. Um, I would have liked to see maybe a higher codec, but I feel like AAC is going to be definitely one of the better options that we have in here. Battery life is fantastic. Charging capabilities, charging from it capabilities are also nice, and the app control is also very simple. Thank you very much to Sony. Thank you very much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.